Hello, welcome back to Mrs. Wilson Science. I'm Mrs. Wilson, and I love to share with you fun activities that you can use to teach different concepts in your classroom. Today, we're going to be looking at some different ways to teach about plate tectonics. So we're going to look at some different options that you can use from Oreos to candy bars, ending up with frosting, fruit roll-ups, and graham crackers. So let's get started. All right, so what you're going to need for this is going to depend on how you want to show about play tectonics. So you have a several different options. You can show a little bit about how plate tectonics work by using Oreos. So I have some Oreos here and we'll have a look at how we can show this using Oreos. You could show about plate tectonics by using candy bars. Uh, I have a Mars bar here. You could, I used to use, when I was in the US, Milky Ways, um, and I used to use the little snack-sized ones so that each student had their own little snack-sized Milky Way bar. And then we can look at how we can use that to teach plate tectonics. But my ultimate favorite one, which I think really shows all of the different plate interactions very clearly at every type of boundary, convergent, divergent, transform, and whether or not you have continental crust or oceanic crust, is using a frosting, graham crackers, and fruit roll-ups. And so I'll show you how I'm going, how I would use that as well in our video today. So let's get started and look at what if we're using an Oreo cookie. So what you will need is one Oreo cookie per student. And what we're gonna do is take off the top of the Oreo and then just really gently break that top piece in half. And then I'm gonna sit it back onto my Oreo. Now when it's back here on my Oreo, what I want to do is kind of show what's happening with the movement of the plates. So plates can transform at transform boundaries, they can move past each other and we can feel that movement, um, especially as that energy locks up. And that's what causes earthquakes and things like the San Andreas Fault that build up at the transform boundary. I can pull these two halves together and I can see the cream filling underneath. And in this case, that cream filling is representing the asthenosphere. And so that would be like a divergent boundary, like at the seafloor or in the Rift Valley in Africa, the Great Rift Valley in Africa. And I can push this together and kind of squish it together. And that would be similar to a convergent boundary that we might find um, between oceanic and oceanic crust, oceanic and continental crust, and continental and continental crust. And it does fold up a little bit, so I can see just a little bit of kind of similar to how this would work if I were um, showing like mountain formation, for instance. Now, this is super basic. It works. And if you add a pinch to some, want something simple to show, I would use Oreo cookies, especially if you have some leftover from some of your other activities that you've been doing. But there are a couple ways that we can look at this that are a little bit better. So let's look at option two. All right, so our second option is to use a, a candy bar like a Milky Way or a Mars bar. So remember that these candy bars, they have that, they're enrobed in chocolate, they have the nougat filling, and then they have the caramel on top. And so the caramel can act like the asthenosphere, whereas the nougat filling can represent the rest of the mantle or the rest of the Earth's interior. And so what you would do with this, and remember generally I would use a smaller snack size bar, that's the really tiny ones with students, but what you would do is you would make just a little bit of a break in the on the top of the chocolate like this. And then what you want to do is ever so slightly just kind of pull it apart until you can see that caramel. And so what we have here is now, this is like a divergent plate boundary. And let's say this is at the ocean floor, we would have here where seafloor spreading is occurring and that lava would be seeping up through. And so we can see that there. And we can see how the, the chocolate has broken quite a bit. And so in similar ways, we might have breaking and movement of the landforms around that. Now I can also take this and I can squish it together. And as I squish it together, 
it can it will fold up and form mountains and you can also see that i can have some subduction happening here so i have one piece going under another piece and so this is how we get um, subduction zone volcanoes and things like that when one plate subducts under the other so when one goes underneath the other plate and melts and then we end up with volcanoes that can form um, further along the subduction zone but we have some folding up here of the chocolate showing the folding up of the landform which is mountain formation i can also move this side to side like i did with my previous one to show that transform boundary so i can show my divergent my convergent and my transform plate boundaries using the chocolate bar now once again this one doesn't really show everything that i want to students to see when i would do this activity so if i wanted to show this a little bit better i would move to my ultimate favorite one so let's have a look at how we can use cake frosting graham crackers and fruit roll-ups to show plate tectonics the first thing that you'll need to do is to get a piece of parchment paper or wax paper to put onto your working surface so you don't make a mess the next thing that you want to do is to get some frosting to form your base, and this is going to act as the asthenosphere, the part of the mantle that where convection currents occur so that plates move. So I'm just going to add a little bit of frosting onto my parchment paper here. Now, if I were doing this with students, it works really well if you put it into the the icing bags that works really well and then you can just plop a bit of icing onto each student's piece of wax paper or parchment paper you can also take your icing and you can add food coloring to it or you can get red or orange food coloring to kind of get that what we think of as the color of magma and lava so that is another option you don't need to do that um, but if you want to, that is something that you can do. I have definitely done that in the past. So the other thing you're going to need for this is a, a wide cup of water. So all I have in here is, the little, is some water, and you'll see why we're going to use that in a second. So I'm going to get out um, first my graham, cracker cra um, graham crackers. These are not actually graham crackers. Once again, I live in England now, and so finding things like graham crackers that I'm used to seeing in supermarkets all everywhere in the US is a little bit more challenging. So what I'm using for my UK version are digestive biscuits. So these are digestive biscuits and we're gonna they they're similar, they don't taste the same, but we're not this isn't for eating, this is for showing how plates work. So that's not important. Alright, so I'm going to take a digestive biscuit and I'm going to um break it in half. All right, so my digestive biscuit, because my digestive biscuit um, or graham cracker is lighter in a way, less dense, um, but thicker, this is going to represent my continental crust. And I'm comparing this to my fruit roll-up. So my fruit roll-up is thinner and denser, which is more like oceanic crust, which is mainly made of basalt. This um, continental crust, it is thicker, less dense, and more like that continental crust. So the first thing I'm going to do is to just lay this on top of my frosting and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to pull it apart. And as I pull this apart, I can now see that um, frosting, which is representing the asthenosphere. And if this were, you know, hot and under pressure, like the, the magma under the crust, this would come up um, and form volcanoes rift it like the great um the rift valley in africa that's a really good example of where this happens i can push these back together again and then i can put them against each other in opposite directions to represent my transform boundary and i can feel that locking up next to each other which gives us where those earthquakes can occur so i can feel that locking up now the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take my two sides of my cookie and I'm going to dunk them into my water. So I want these to be just a little bit wet. Now if you're using graham crackers, they really just need to get damp. If you're using digestives, you probably want to get them a bit wetter since they're used to being um, dunked into drinks. So when I do this, and I'm now going to push them together, and what we'll see is because of that dampness, they're as they push together, they fold up and I can see those con that constructive boundary of making folded mountain ranges 
and this works really well like i said when i use the graham crackers it works okay here with the digestives you'll just need to get them a little bit um more wet when you dip it in the water uh compared to if you're using the graham crackers so the graham crackers just need a quick dunk these would need a longer dunk in the water in order for this to work and so now i can see these folded mountain ranges so i've shown now the interactions between all three types of continental crust whether it's divergent convergent or transform boundary now let's look at the same thing at if we're using oceanic crust the fruit roll-up now i have here these are actually called fruit winders so in the uk i have these they are called fruit winders they're a bit um narrower than I would normally use, but I think we can make this work. If you're in the US, I highly recommend um, fruit leather or fruit roll-ups. That would work really well. Um, but this is going to represent our oceanic crust. And I'm going to take two pieces and since they're, in this case, they're already kind of split in half, that works perfectly for me. So what I'm going to do is lie them side by side, just like I did with my continental crust. And I can pull them apart. I can smush them together, and when I push them together, um, normally, if if this were uh, at an actual plate boundary, the older piece of crust would subduct under the younger piece of crust. So these are similar, obviously, they're like similar in age since they're just bits of the fruit roll-up. Um, they're going, they, they're just kind of pushing against each other and forming those folded mountains. I can also move them side to side to show the transform boundary. So remember that in actual case, and here if I make one subduct under the other, you can actually see there, um, as one subducting under the other, we do have the movement out of some of that frosting, which kind of shows how those volcanoes form. So remember that as one plate subducts underneath the other, here as it gets closer to the mantle this part starts to melt and as it melts up uh, melts and there's there's usually seawater that's come along with it and, and that adds steam and it heats up and so it moves up through this part of the other plate causing it to form volcanoes and those are what we call our subduction zone volcanoes like we see around the ring of fire of the pacific ocean all right so I've shown you this now, the three. So I've got my divergent boundary, like we have at the seafloor. So seafloor spreading. I have my convergent boundary, where I would see subduction. And this is similar to what we see around the Pacific Ocean and the Ring of Fire. Um, some of that is oceanic, oceanic. Some of that's oceanic continental, which we'll look at in a second. And then I can also show that transform boundary if they were sliding past each other. All right, so for my final step, I'm going to want part of a cookie or graham cracker and one piece of what's representing my seafloor and i'm going to show the interactions between the two all right so i've got half of my uh piece of digestive biscuit which is similar to my graham cracker cookie i have still here my piece of oceanic crust on on my icing and i'm going to show the interactions between these two so the main thing that they can show that we would see with these is the subduction of the oceanic crust underneath the continental crust. So when they come together, the oceanic crust sits lower down into the asthenosphere because it is more dense than the continental crust. And so it subducts under and then we see later on subduction zone volcanoes form onto that piece of continental plate and this would be very similar to what is happening this is what ha is happening with the andes mountains in south america around there the part of the nazca plate is subducting underneath the south american plate and as that happens we have that formation of the volcanoes around in that area and so we can see we can model here the different interactions between continental crust and continental crust oceanic crust and oceanic crust and be between them themselves so continental continental oceanic oceanic and continental oceanic and all of the different things that all of the different features that can form and all of the effects remember anytime we have any interaction between plates we can always get earthquakes in some cases we can get volcanoes and then we can also have mountain building. So it really depends on where that's happening and what type of crust is involved, whether it's oceanic or continental crust that is involved. Now, when I was teaching earth science, I would usually start my unit talking about continental drift, seafloor spreading, and convection currents. And then we'd move into plate tectonics. And there was a song that I learned from the district where I taught that I think is really helpful with 
how convection currents move within the interior of the earth. And I sing it to the tune of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Now, this is not my song. I did not write it. I learned it from one of my district uh, professional development sessions, but I do want to share it with you. So it goes like this. Convection currents in the mantle, they go round and round. Hot goes up and cold goes down, moving plates around. A sphere is the one that's moving round and round. Let the sphere is where we live, we call the plates the ground. Now you can take that song and you can teach it to your students. They can sing it because it's to the tune of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. You can sing it as a round. And it's a great way to help them remember. And you can have them recall that song at the start of every lesson, for instance, or maybe a few times a week. And then they finally get to the point where they can sing that song to themselves, perhaps when they're taking an assessment. And they'll remember the difference between the lithosphere, the asthenosphere, as well as what's happening with the movement in of the convection currents in the asthenosphere. I've even had students come up and tell me once they were in high school, so four or five years later, that they still remember that song. So I always find using music is a great way, incorporating songs is a great way to help students remember material. One of the resources that I find super helpful when teaching about plate tectonics is from geology.com. And I just want to show you some of the teaching resources that they have here on their site. So this link here, Teaching Plate Tectonics, is amazing. There are animations that you can use to show what is happening, like this one here for subduction of an oceanic plate underneath a piece of continental plate. So oceanic crust underneath continental crust and what's happening. These animations are really, really helpful in order to show students what's happening as these different landforms form at our plate boundaries. The other thing that I find really helpful from this website is the plate tectonics guidebook. These illustrations I have used multiple times to teach students what's happening at the different plate boundaries. It's a great start because it gives them the basic diagrams and then they can add arrows showing movements. Um, I generally do this color coded so we'll use blue and red as well as other colors to show what's happening. So I find this guidebook a great way to teach plate tectonics. As much as I would love to have students draw everything, sometimes there's just not enough time for that. So in this case, the basic drawings are completed, the outlines of them, and all students need to do is add arrows to show what's happening. So here we have information about two types of crust. This here, we can show what's happening with the plates and we can draw convection currents. There's a plate boundary map where boundaries can be color-coded like convergent, divergent, and transform. And then we can add arrows and show what's forming at each of our different boundaries, whether it's divergent, oceanic, oceanic, examples of where it occurs, and the effects, what happens. So I highly recommend you visit this website and download these resources and incorporate them into your teaching of plate tectonics. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and you found some great ideas for teaching plate tectonics, whether you're teaching earth science, geology, or geography. If you liked the video that you've seen, please do share it with your friends, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can get updates every time a video is published. Until next time, this has been Mrs. Wilson with Mrs. Wilson Science. So long.